Yo ladies and gentlemen, as you can see from the title of the video, today we are talking about the future of Spellbreak. Um, and it's looking pretty bright, not gonna lie. They've just literally released the roadmap for the near future, the not so near future, and then longer down the line. Um, pretty exciting. They go into more detail than they did on the PAX panel. I'll put a card up on the top right of the previous video if you want to see that trailer. That was pretty exciting, I'm not going to lie. But yeah guys, as I always say, if you do enjoy the content and you're really enjoying Spellbreak and you like these sort of informational videos, please subscribe to the channel, hit, give it a thumbs up and um, hit that notification bell so you know every time I drop a brand new video. And also please use the code in the Epic Game Store, it's Mr. O. Um, I appreciate all of you guys. Um, yeah, but anyway, let's get into it. So, hi breakers. Like I mentioned in the Spellbreak Day 8 post on Reddit, it's time to discuss our roadmap for Spellbreak. Roadmaps lay out plans for the future of the game and what we're going to be doing over the next months and potentially years in some cases. We'll try to make these posts regularly, but by design, they will likely be around once a quarter. So that's, that's fair enough, guys. So here we go. Two small notes before we dive in. Roadmaps don't generally include things like bug fixes or other smaller features. We've got plenty more in the pipeline that won't be mentioned below, but that doesn't mean it's not happening. Okay, that's fine. So they want to keep a few things under wraps. I can respect that. Roadmaps can change sometimes a lot. This represents our plans as of today, but there are all sorts of reasons something could be you know, taken off basically. So if basic, without reading all that, basically if something's too complicated for them to do right now, they may have to postpone it. So we just need to bear with the devs here. Right, short term, this is the nitty gritty. In the short term, think minus a month. So hopefully by the end, but in, in early October, we're primarily focused on patch one, AKA 1.1. This is gonna include a ton of bug fixes that showed up post launch. While, focus, while its focus is on fixing things, fixing bugs, should I say, it also includes a number of small quality of life features like rebalancing to aim assist and updates to the sound effects. Now that's great, because the sound effects are a little bit off. In addition to 1.1, we're also going to be rolling out the Shadow Step and Chrono Master runes. Okay, I've heard a lot about this Shadow Step one. Shadow Step allows you to do a short range dash and become invisible for a brief moment of time. So that's gonna be clutch for um, toxicologist. And then here we go, what's Chrono Master? Gives you control over time itself. Wow, okay. A few seconds after it rewinds your health, armor, and position to the time which you activated it. Okay, that is huge, guys. That is really big. So basically, if you get blasted and you've got like 10 HP, Activate the Chrono Master Room, it will rewind you back and your health will be full again. That's insane. That's going to be OP. Midterm. Time frame of one to three months for midterm. A good portion of the team has been working on the two patches following 1.1 since before the launch. Okay. And I'm going to refer to these two patches as Prologue and Chapter 1. For a quick diversion here, Chapter Access basically remain when you grade out. Okay, that's fine. We want to tell you a story in Spellbreak and we want to do it over the course of weeks, months and years. It's not just about adding a new gameplay mechanic every other week, but about exploring why that exists in the world. Okay, so that's basically going to... I think this is going to be a battle pass system, um, heavily lore based by the sounds of what they're saying here. So let's see this. Weekly quest based story content and rewards. Okay. On top of that, as you make your way through the chapter as a whole, you will unlock new gameplay and cosmetic rewards. So yeah, it sounds to me like a battle pass. In the coming weeks, we'll have much more in-depth look at the chapter system, but I wanted to provide some basic context for first parts of it as described below. So prologue. <clears throat> In our first major patch, we're going to be setting up the story for the coming chapters and we'll be introducing the following features. So the beginning of the chapter system will reunite you will reunite you with Averia Emberdane, 
who will help further hone your skills as a battle mage and earn some tasty cosmetics along the way. Okay, okay, I like that, I like that. Clash, okay, this is what I said on the previous video. Our 9v9 team deathmatch mode will kick off during the prologue. Clash is an excellent way to blow off steam and get into a, some non-stop spellbreak combat as you battle another team in a race to a predetermined number of exiles. It's also great for completing some of the harder quests. So basically it's like a standard team deathmatch, just frag, respawn, frag, respawn till the uh, you know the targets met. Right, it's time for a spooky Halloween and it's not canon. Some tricks and treats will be coming into the store. Okay, I like that. Halloween skins. Three new point talents. Your builds are about to get a lot harder to plan. Now, this is what I'm happy about because there's only a minimalistic build you can do um, and most of the time you run the same, pretty much the same build for every class. So I'm excited about that. Here we go. New and some reworked consumables, including a brand new gameplay affecting one. It, okay, they're very quiet on that one. That's going to be interesting. Right, chapter one. The second major patch is going to kick off the story off. It's going to kick the story off in earnest. You'll be introduced to the Order of the Vowbreakers and given your first assignment, researching the spellstorm and trying to put a stop to it. As for the rest of chapter one, we'll just have to wait and see, guys. Okay. So far, I'm liking it. So far, I'm liking it. Right, long-term plans. Long-term is where things that are very large or in very early stages of development live. These things are likely three months or more out. Okay, so looking, we're looking towards three to six months, I would say. But they're deemed a priority and discussions are happening internally. There's not going to be a lot in here in terms of specifics to share. Okay, they want to keep their, they want to keep it quiet. But we wanted to let you know that this stuff we're actively discussing and designing and nailing down. For all of these, they're far enough out that there's plenty of time for feedback and discussion with y'all. And that's what we want to do over the next coming months. That's so, so key that they're going to include us as the community, give them feedback and then implement that. So that's, that's really, really interesting. Okay, so we're definitely going to get more gauntlets more classes, elements, runes as well. Okay. Yep. We've got a lot of exploration. We've been doing here into art styles for elements, concepts and prototypes for gauntlets, runes and more. We've even opened up a few jobs specifically to work on these in the past few weeks. Interesting. And here becomes the sweat. So they're going to do a ranked and competitive, you know, slash competitive mode. Spellbreak's combat skill expression and team dynamics makes this an incredibly exciting place to explore. We've heard a lot of feedback and you know ideas that they're kicking around. But what are you looking for? Small scale team versus team arena style skirmishes, ranked league style play, or large scale esports matches, private lobbies. Okay. So they're literally including us and they're gonna take all of our feedback. And then sort of push ranked slash competitive in that sort of avenue. Um, okay, LTMs. At the other end of the spectrum, we want to introduce a variety of limited time modes that utilize the crazier mechanics in Spellbreak. Frozen <laughs> or flight races, Feather Fall and Frost Gauntlet only matches, loot pinatas, low stress modes that highlight mechanics in new and hilarious ways. Or if I'm being honest, as a test ground, for the more permanent introduction of experimental features. Yeah, of course. Guilds. Finally, we want to introduce ways for you to play together with your friends that last longer than one match or a session. We want to reinforce social bonds amongst players, give you shared goals that you can work together towards and proudly show off your group's accomplishments. Okay, I like that. That's sort of MMO-esque vibe there. And then last but not least, very short term. As of posting this, the score, the store schedule should be rolling over tonight into the normal schedule. We've completed our tests and starting tonight, you'll find new stuff much more frequently. Enjoy. Okay, that's good because it was getting um, a little bit stale, the same sort of skins, a bit boring if I'm being honest. Um, in the previous video, if you catch that, there is some new leak skins that they have shown off that look pretty epic. 
But yeah, guys, anyway, the future of Hyperscape is looking pretty bright. Um, yeah, that's what I've got to say. I'm excited. Leave me a comment down below. What are your thoughts on this roadmap? And out of all of that there, what is the most important thing you're looking forward to? And also the least important thing you're looking forward to. Other than that, guys, stay safe. And I'll see you in the Hololands. Take care. Peace.